Okay, beautiful people. Before we deal with this topic, I have a doubt. What is methods of study? Well, methods of study is basically how we learn something. So methods of study can also be called methods of learning. So what are we going to discuss in this topic is methods of learning economics. Well, like learning anything comes learning economics. Since my childhood, I had two options. Either learn from what my parents said or go do it myself and learn. Suppose I have like things that I had to learn from my parents. When my parents said me, don't touch boiling water or you will burn your hand. And that happened. Right. I never have tried it. I never have actually put my hand into boiling water just to try and test whether my parents were right or they were wrong. Right. And there were things that I learned on my own. There were things that, you know, I had to go do analysis and then learn on my own. Like I had to do maths on my own. I had to learn on my own. My parents gave me three options. Hey, nobody's born smart. We all start at zero. Can't talk, can't walk, certainly can't do algebra. Adding, reading, riding, riding a bike. Nobody's good at anything at first. There was a time when Einstein couldn't count to ten. And Shakespeare had to learn his ABCs just like the rest of us. Thankfully, we're born to learn. Similarly, in economics, there are two ways of studying economics. One is the deductive method and the other is the inductive method. Now the deductive method is what you learn from the society, is what they say you and what you believe. Okay, this should be true. And the inductive method is when you make calculations, when you make assumptions, when you make some experiments and learn something out of it. Got my point? Now let's see ahead about deductive method. So like I said, in deductive method, we learn from the society. So it would be right for me to say that deductive method, the laws are made on general standards, right? The laws are made on general standards, general assumptions, general axonyms and truths that have been established over a period of time from generations to generations. For example, if I say that human beings are hungry and that why and that's why Philip eats, Johnny eats and Nancy eats. Of course, when she is not on her diet day. <laughs> so this is called deductive method. Agar sab karte hain, isliye x, y, z karta hai. Right? Sab karte hain. That means generally everyone does it and that's why you do it too. So basically, the flow in deductive method is first the problem is identified then they make the assumption then deduce your hypothesis and then test your hypothesis and this is how the various theories in economics have been built this study is also called as this deductive study is also called as and this is a very important MCQ. They keep on asking what is the other name of deductive method. So the other names of deductive methods are abstract method, priori method and you know the, the, the word abstract and priori give you the sense that it is based on abstract reasoning and not on actual facts. And this is how, you know, you learn from society. Well, the second name of deductive method can also be hypothetical method, as this is based on deductions and testing of hypothesis. The third name of deductive method can be analytical method, as we analyze the general assumptions. However, this method has the following limitations too. First, assumptions may be 
untrue or partially true second valid conclusions may not be drawn in absence of information and third it's dangerous to claim universal validity of economic generalizations now let's understand the three demerits you know of this method taking an example and this in and and in this example god is going to help us so let's take the example on god in india i don't think i can count the number of religions that we have if i go to a hindu priest he will tell me all your problems will be solved by hindu god if i go to a christian priest he will tell me all the problems will be solved by jesus right and if i go to a muslim prophet he is going to tell me all the problems are going to be solved by allah right so first demerit assumptions may be untrue or partially true who knows which god is going to help me remember pk right he he tried to find out that you know which god is going to help him now let's come to the second demerit valid conclusions may not be drawn in the absence of information and the truth is that that there is an absence of information that whether god exists or god does not even exist whether he is listening to my points or whether he is not listening to my points right so i'm not sure whether god exists or not exists and the third that is dangerous to claim universal validity of economic generalizations i cannot generalize that okay once i went to the temple and i prayed god please pass me and i passed that means everyone should go to the temple and pray god please pass me and everyone will pass right so this is how the the deductive method is you know kind of confusing to understand and say that the deductive method is the right method and you know inductive is not the right one so so you know we have we we from from our parents that we know that we should go to temple we should pray to god and we are doing this but have we ever taken a scientific thought over it no this is the perfect example of deductive method is that we learn something from the society and we do it without finding out scientific basis for its truth or its false now let's look at inductive method of learning economics in inductive method conclusions are drawn based on the collection and analysis of facts relevant to the inquiry This means I'm not going to believe my parents that they said, "Hey, don't touch boiling water, you will burn your hand." What I'm going to do is I am going to boil water. I am going to put my hand inside it and then I'm going to conclude, "Hey, boiling water does really hurt." So, the logic proceeds from particular to general. That means if I burnt my hand, so will you. so will he so will she right so this method is also called as productive method as we are producing some results generalizations are based on observations of individual examples in deductive method we were basing our conclusions on general assumptions while here we are basing it on specific individual conclusions many researches in macroeconomics is based on inductive method well there are some benefits of inductive method and the benefits are number 1 statistical induction leads to precise exact and measurable conclusions right i actually measured okay if i put the water on on gas and if i heat it after 5 minutes my hand will burn before 5 minutes the water is not really hot so i can actually put my hand into the water second it underlines the importance of relative law in economics and third it shows that generalizations are valid only under certain conditions right i cannot say a general will be for everyone 
I went to the temple and passed, that doesn't mean you can also go into the temple and pass, right? But like there are some demerits too. And let's understand the demerits. First, risk of hurried conclusions. You know, I might not have tried it n number of times before giving my conclusions. I just did it once and I gave my conclusions. I'm not stupid to boil the water every time, like 10 times, put my hand 10 times into the water and conclude, yes, it really burns. I might just give the conclusion saying it once and it might be wrong. For someone, the hand might burn at six minutes, seven minutes, you know. Similarly, another demerit, difficulties involve in the collection of data. Now imagine if I have to conclude something over the full of India, it's very hard to find out the data analysis of full India. And it's also a very time taking thing. Third demerit, the fact that observations and experimentations have very limited application in a science that deals with human activities. Now economic deals with human activities and a very less of science can be applied on human activities. Like for example, what gives me satisfaction won't give you satisfaction. And it's so personal to everyone that it's too, too, too hard to find loose rules and laws based on individual likings and dislikings. So this sums up both the methods. Each have merits and demerits. And Mr. Marshall, M for Marshall, M for mother, M for material well-being, right? Rightly pointed out that induction and deduction, both are needed for scientific thought as the right and the left foot are needed for walking. That's such a good thought, right? Let's just look at ourselves. We are half what our parents thought that, hey, do this, this will give you advantage and half that we decided what we want to be based on our conclusions. And had it not for both, we would not be the person that we are today. Conclusions are drawn from deductive method and verified by the inductive method, right? This helps us to finish another topic. Now we should do the practical MCQs really fast. Thank you.